I'd like to take uh, approximately 12 minutes to, uh, today to uh, discuss first, in the first half of the, the presentation, uh, the importance of venture capital and a bunch of little known facts about how it actually affects uh, innovation and job creation throughout the economy. Then in the second piece of the presentation, I'll talk about a personal experience that I had. Uh, it started at the time of the uh, global financial crisis when uh, our industry ecosystem kind of came to a screeching halt. And uh, some work that we did throughout our ecosystem to, uh, to get it back on track again. And then I'll conclude with uh, the observation that we've done a lot, but we still have a lot more that we need to do. So let me uh, get underway here. Vibrant uh, venture ecosystem is vital to innovation, uh, job creation, and economic growth. And I want to just take a, a little bit of a dive here. Um, how, where do jobs come from? There's some interesting data that's uh, recently published by the Kauffman Foundation in Kansas City that if uh, we didn't have uh, small businesses and venture capital-backed startups, uh, that we would not have created any new jobs at all in this country for the last 25 years. So put it another way, the combination of small startups and entrepreneurs and, and family-run uh, businesses in conjunction with the uh, professional uh, form of venture capital as well as uh, angel financing uh, components, so I'm using the term broadly here, that's where all the jobs that are created in our economy come from. So another astounding statistic that is uh, not very well known that the revenues of all venture-backed companies that have been started in the last 25 or 30 years correspond to 21% of our nation's uh, gross domestic product. That is a very high leverage for an industry which goes out, um, and the, the steps in the industry are shown here. Um, you start out by uh, raising funds from limited partners, then we find exciting companies, we nurture and uh, provide value add to them, and then we uh, you know, wrap things up with a successful exit, which means either an IPO or initial public offering, or more frequently, uh, a, a, an exit would uh, take place through uh, you know, one company buying another, and that's what we call uh, M&A. So that's the, uh, the normal flow here. Um, the, the other remarkable statistic about venture capital is to get that 21% of the GDP, we only spend about $30 billion a year uh, starting companies. And so there's an enormous amount of leverage that uh, comes from the uh, job creation and the innovation. But it isn't just about money. You've been hearing uh, other presentations about the, uh, the things that uh, we're doing in the innovation area here in, in Boston and throughout the world to uh, improve uh, the quality of lives of, um, uh, of Americans in this particular case here. Uh, some of the data from our um, industry uh, survey uh, shows that one out of three Americans have had their uh, quality of their lives improved by innovations that came from our uh, nation's uh, life sciences and biotech companies. So it isn't just about the, about the money. We've also been able to clean up our environment through a very concerted effort to uh, fund uh, clean tech companies and uh, get you know, less dependent on fossil fuels over the last uh, decade as well. Another, um, I think, uh, more well-known fact is that a, a lot of really uh, brand name uh, transformative companies were started um, by, uh, by venture capital. And this goes all the way back to the, uh, the, the, uh, the time of the middle 1970s when, um, when venture capital was really just uh, getting to, uh, to be started. And there were, um, there was a, the, there were a group of people, um, like about a, a dozen um, guys that, uh, that hung around in Silicon Valley would get together and have lunch once a week, and then they'd uh, pass the hat and put their own money into... Uh, New startup companies. Uh, and some of the, you know, the, the most famous names uh, in the world technology market were started that way. Then, as you could expect, the uh, time from um, 
when we only had this handful of people, it, the, the industry has gotten up to a much higher scale now where we were, uh, we have like, we're investing $30 billion a year in, in a wide range of different uh, kinds of companies. And this is just um, a point to, to make here. Uh, you can actually probably draw the, uh, the fair conclusion that a lot of this innovation, including the Tesla car here, that if it weren't for venture capital, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be in existence today. All right, um, now let's talk about uh, the important role that venture capital plays in, in job creation. Over here on the left side of the chart, I just simply compared the uh, compound annual growth rates uh, from 2006 to 2008 for all companies, which is the small gray dot, and the uh, one just to the right of that, the big green uh, circle there, venture-backed companies grow jobs and expand them three times faster than uh, normal companies and um, another very, very important point is most of the growth for jobs that are created by venture capital-backed companies happens, 92% of that happens after it goes public. So if we don't have an opportunity to take our companies public, we, uh, we don't have uh, the kind of uh, you know, fertile uh, environment that we need for job creation. Then there's a third benefit that accrues to, to, from uh, activities in, in venture, and this is that sophisticated limited partners like the endowments at MIT, Harvard, Stanford, and so on, have discovered that, um, that uh, venture capital can play a very important role in producing superior investment returns at those uh, organizations which uh, you know, support venture, and it's, these are pretty compelling statistics. And if you take early stage venture capital and you look back over a 15 year period, it's not too, not too shabby to have an 82% uh, IRR, uh, and certainly not, not much uh, worse to have 48% over a uh, 20 year period. So, in summary, we are the source, when I say we, I mean the venture capital industry. I've been in it for about 30 years now, and um, I've become a student and a fairly passionate student of uh, the, uh, the way our industry operates. I served uh, for one year as the chairman of the National Venture Capital Association back um, in 2008, and I'll come to that story here in just a moment. We're responsible for uh, job creation and superior investment returns, in summary. Okay, so in 2008, the uh, global financial crisis, uh, you know, brought to everybody's attention a whole variety of unhealthy symptoms uh, in our ecosystem. And this is a plot of uh, the value of IPOs, that uh, initial public offerings, starting back in 1991, going all the way over to, uh, to 2008, when I woke up one morning in the middle of the, uh, the year and uh, looked back and we just had finished Q2 and there were zero IPOs of venture-backed companies uh, during the uh, second quarter. I said, That's, that means we got a problem because all those other things, the good things that were happening that we'd just gone through, they go away if, uh, you know, uh, if, we, if we can't fix it. So we went and uh, got a, all the uh, players in the venture capital ecosystem I won't run through every one of these. The I-banks are investment banks that take the companies public, institutional investors, the stock exchanges, law firms, accounting firms, entrepreneurs, and venture capitalists all depend on having a healthy ecosystem. And we, we were seeing that some things were clearly broken. So we put together a uh, document called a four-pillar plan, which I personally authored. We went out and uh, unveiled it um, here in Boston in the uh, April of 2009, and we made a whole long list of recommendations uh, on things that we could do, both in our industry and with uh, the assistance of the government. And so it took about three years of time by a bunch of these people here. This is a photograph uh, of our visit to the White House to sign the, uh, the jobs bill, which uh, President Obama signed into law the first week in April of 2012. And that's the actual signing right there. The key provisions of the Job Act were to reduce regulation, 
uh, solve a, a silly inconsistency whereby American companies had to disclose all of their financial information, but a, a company filing from China could keep it uh, private. So we normalized all of that. It reduced some of the reporting and it expedited the, uh, the pre-IPO process. Some other things that it fixed were uh, some of the onerous problems associated with some earlier legislation back in 2002 known as Sarbanes-Oxley. So uh, just a, a quote here is that one of the big beneficiaries of the JOBS Act has been the life sciences industry, and I'm pleased to talk about that here in Boston, which I think is fairly widely acclaimed as the center of life sciences uh, venture activity in the country. And it, it's very clear here that a whole bunch of companies were able to go public in the life sciences area that would not otherwise have been able to do that. And this is just a testament from one of the uh, people there that, uh, that was one of the beneficiaries. So right now, where are we? The capital markets this year have uh, made a significant improvement over what they were uh, back in 2008 and 9. This is probably the best year since uh, 2000 when we had the, uh, the, the, the last internet bubble. It's, um, we've got 115 IPOs, raised 55 billion. You can see the increase from 13. And um, the markets, both in the US, Europe, and Asia, have all gotten significantly uh, uh, stronger, and that's good. There's one final problem that we have, though. There's a, um, a problem with the people's perception of the role the government plays in helping or hindering the venture capital industry. A survey done by um, one of the uh, big four accounting firms did a, a global confidence survey, came back and said the US is number one place that people want to start companies and want to invest in innovation here. But we are dead last regarding the confidence that people have in the government's ability to support uh, venture-friendly investment policies. So I am going to wrap up by uh, simply summarizing some additional things that are being talked about very widely in the press. These are a bunch of new things that Obama has an opportunity to do to go back and uh, do the next rev on the JOBS Act and to fix some of these things, uh, then we, uh, we can fix the confidence problem as well as the, um, you know, the perception of uh, the government being so unfriendly. Thank you. Thank you.